a very cloudy start to the 4th of July weekend with a front making its way through Texas. And let's check out the surface analysis. Now, back on Monday, we did talk about swapping out Monday with Friday and making Friday a supporter-only video. Well, I forgot to mention that in yesterday's webcast, so I don't want to cause a bunch of confusion. So we're going to make this a public video and return to the usual schedule next week. So supporters, I appreciate your patience. It has been kind of an unusual week here. There's that front there moving into the southern U.S., some very dry air coming back in behind it, dew points in the 50s and 60s with a clearing trend in much of the Midwest. And out ahead of the front and along the front itself, some thunderstorms breaking out, showers, rain, and kind of a wet, miserable day. The main frontal wave is up there in New Jersey, so we're going to expect that to move off Long Island, off the coast of Massachusetts this evening. And out in the southwestern U.S., we've still got the moisture, 62 degree dew point at Phoenix, 64 there at, uh, I think that's going to be Blythe. So the moisture is working back into California, and we could see some showers popping up on the mountains outside of Los Angeles. And there at El Paso, you can see those easterly winds bringing that moisture westward into the Continental Divide area and helping to fuel some of that precip in that region. And a quick check in Canada shows that, yeah, the heat wave is continuing, but it's moderated down to mid and upper 90s. We're apparently done with the 100 degree temperatures. I mean, we're not completely finished with the day, but uh, it's going to be kind of tough getting up to those numbers. And we're starting to see a frontal wave in the Hudson Bay region and also in northern Saskatchewan. Lots of cold air up there in the Northwest Territories and Nunavut poised to come southward. And we're already seeing temperatures in the 60s and 70s along the Yukon Northwest Territories border. Another warm day for Alaska, 87 there at Eagle near Dawson, and I did see 80 degrees at Fairbanks. It looks like a new push of cold air coming southward from the Beaufort Sea. We go from 72 there at Great Slave Lake down to 34 to 45 along the Arctic coast, and you can see those winds are quite gusty back there. In the southwestern U.S. looks very similar to yesterday. A lot of monsoon moisture throughout the Rockies and the Intermountain region, the Great Basin. And we also see the marine layer, very common this time of year, along the Pacific coast there. Sometimes if there's very strong heating inland, that will bring the marine air inland. And that will invade some of the passes and flood over the Los Angeles Basin all the way out to Riverside. But we're not seeing that today. Some of the moisture, we know that it's in place in the lower Colorado River region, so we're not quite seeing those thunderstorms on the mountains near Riverside in Ontario, but some of the tops there are showing some cumulus development. And there's the latest surface chart as we record this. Still pretty warm in the deserts of Arizona, 97 to 101. At Tucson and Phoenix, we got 107 at Las Vegas. And we do have that upper high kind of building in this area here. And we should see those temperatures creeping up over the weekend in Nevada and Utah. In Los Angeles, you can see the marine layer spreading inland, 69 there with a west wind. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, July 6th. Many years ago, I stepped off an airplane after coming back from the Philippines. We lived over there for a few years. My dad was in the military, and it was kind of a shock. You know, you think you'd come home to warm conditions, hot weather in Los Angeles, but that was not the case. We were freezing out there on the ramp, stepping off that 747, and we were not accustomed to 60s with a strong wind blowing, so we were freezing and looking up the San Joaquin Valley, that's a good barometer for what's going on in California proper. And we see lots of 90s, 100 degree reading there at Bakersfield. So that means that it's just a 
garden variety warm day for that part of the country. Looking at conditions in Texas this afternoon, Southern Plains, Southern Rockies. Well, we've got that front moving southward. You can kind of see it right there. I'm not too sure how far back it is in this region because there is still quite a bit of moisture right here behind that line. And I don't think we've quite changed out the air mass in some of those areas. But definitely as you go north, much drier up in Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee. So taking a look at the surface chart, the front, it actually appears to be somewhere in here. A very common mistake is to place fronts along the wind shift line because the main indicator of a cold front is density, which means we have to use temperature and to a lesser extent moisture. However, even though we've got 86 over 71, 86 over 72, it's much hotter down to the south. So maybe, maybe that is the air mass change right there. So not much of a cool down back behind it. It does get drier as you get into Missouri, but I think we can go ahead and call that a cold front. So maybe that's going to be a little bit further south than what we have on the opening chart. In the southeastern U.S., we've got that front also pushing south through Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. Lots of storms along the length of that front and out ahead of it. And this is also the day that we're looking for that Saharan dust to show up. It does look like over the past couple of days, it was working through the Western Caribbean. You can see it moving towards Belize. And we don't have any data past that for today. There's a swath where nothing's showing up, but I think the flow there may be a little bit light and variable. So maybe it's just kind of, kind of diffusing over Mexico. Looks like another push coming into the Windward Islands area. This may arrive a little bit faster since it's further north. And by extrapolation, we could see that in Florida in about a day or two. In the northeast, we've got our main Bear Clinic shield along the coast, and that's where we find the frontal system. Remember, that was running about something like that there. And then further to the west, that's where we tend to find the troughing in the upper level low. And there certainly is one in this area here, northern Pennsylvania. And you can see some cold core showers and thunderstorms out there in the north part of the state. We can take a closer look at that. And there they are. Those are going to be a lot of low-topped, multi-cells, strongly diurnal. So those should start shutting down in a few hours. SPC does have a marginal risk for that area. There's the surface chart showing the cyclonic flow in that region. And cooler air will be filtering in to that region. And for tomorrow, Albany, they're at 64 right now, and they're going to be seeing 64 for tomorrow, so a very cool Saturday. And that's going to break the record for the lowest maximum temperature that was set in 1992. That was 69 degrees. Poughkeepsie, located right there, they're at 71. They're expecting 65 for tomorrow, which also breaks the record for the state. And Manchester, right about there. They're also going to break the record with 63, which will be below the 64 degree record set in 1929. In the north central U.S., not much to talk about. Mostly fair across much of the region. Some cool temperatures in the Great Lakes areas. Got uh, 72 there at Chicago, and it warms up to 85 at Minneapolis, and it gets even worse as you go west. 97 at Bismarck, 96 at Minot and 90 at Rapid City. A little bit cooler down there at Denver with 85. None of those temperatures breaks a record, however. But as we go west, yeah, there are some record breakers. That's going to be Haver, Montana, 100, which breaks the record for the date set in 1985 with 99. Glasgow, 99 there. That's a couple degrees shy of the record. And Great Falls, 94 there. That's about five degrees short of the record, likewise. So it is hot up in that region, but uh, we are hard pressed to find records. And it's very 
nice to see temperatures coming down into the 80s and 90s out there in the deserts and Portland back up to 82, but that probably feels like a refreshing day in November to them after what they went through. And we do have some thunderstorms breaking out in Alberta, coming out of the Canadian Rockies, Banff National Park, heading towards, looks like maybe Calgary, Red Deer. And that's going to be along that frontal boundary. Let me stop the animation so you can kind of see what's going on. You've got that north wind back there behind the front that may appear to the storm as backed flow, so that may enhance some of the severe weather potential. Looks like the front is maybe down in this area right here. You can see the little convergence in the wind field, the warmer temperatures down to the south and up to the north, looks like low 80s. So these storms are definitely interacting with that frontal boundary with some of the faster flow aloft. So it could be some severe potential up in that region. I always have a hard time figuring out Canada's severe weather warnings and watches because they're not quite set up like SPC. So you kind of have to go through this list and yeah, that's probably it right there. Severe thunderstorm watch. So they do have a watch in effect there. Damaging wind gusts, damaging hail and heavy rain. And looks like on Twitter at AB storm, that hashtag, some pictures coming out from some of those storms. Looks kind of LP ish there. And I don't know if that's an official graphic, but uh, yeah, uh, give that a look. There's probably some interesting stuff going on. And I think for our forecast, the 24-hour QPF is a good way to see where there's problems. You can certainly make out the locations of the frontal systems and pretty much everything concentrated along that front right there. You can see the monsoon, the cold core system, and the stuff up in Alberta. So let's run that forward and see how things look this weekend. So running that forward through the 4th, you can see most of the problems are around San Antonio and Houston and along the Gulf Coast region. Looks like possibly more storms along that same area of the Canadian Rockies. And then going into next week, yep, you can see the tropical storm. We need to take a look at that and what looks like a new system moving across the Midwest region around midweek. So it looks like a lot of rain in the Mississippi River Basin. And you can see another storm making its way eastward across Canada. And down to the south, it looks like maybe a tropical disturbance in South Texas towards next weekend. And most of that heads up the Rio Grande. Let's take a look at that uh, tropical storm. And it is a hurricane, Elsa. 75 knots. They had predicted that to be a tropical storm all the way up to Florida, so apparently this is running stronger than guidance had indicated. And there's a quick look at that forecast hurricane all the way up towards Cuba, and then the track pretty much the same, dying off as a tropical storm in western Florida. And there's that wind speed table, 75 knots sustained, kind of tapering off going into Sunday and Monday. So pretty much a low end cat one storm dying off to a tropical storm next week. And I think that'll be a good stopping point. I want to get this wrapped up and uploaded. So you all have a great weekend and we'll be back on Monday again for the supporters and Tuesday for everybody else. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye bye.